Hi, I'm Dr. Vonda Wright, and this is Hot For Your Health. In this episode of Hot For Your Health, celebrity cardiologist Dr. Susan Steinbaum talks to you about the number one killer of women, heart disease. She teaches you how to live a heart-healthy life. We know that heart disease is the number one killer of all women, and in fact, it is greater than all cancers combined including breast, including lung, add them together and you have more deaths from heart disease. We've thought that heart disease happens about 10 years after menopause and that's when the risk is the greatest. But in fact, statistics have shown that in women less than 55 years old, there is an increased incidence in heart disease. Now that's something that made me write this book. Heart disease in women less than 55 years old that we would usually think of being a low-risk population. So we have to change our ideas about heart disease, and we'll talk about this a lot more. One of the issues is awareness. As I said, women don't know that it is their greatest risk. And those groups that are at the most risk are the least aware of their risk. The American Heart Association has a 2020 strategic goal to improve the cardiovascular health of all Americans by 20% while reducing the deaths from cardiovascular disease and stroke by 20%. If we do not deal with an awareness and we do not sort of bridge that disconnect, we're in trouble. The reality is the state of our nation is getting to be a sicker and sicker country. At about 45% of the country has at least one risk factor, 13% have two risk factors, 3% three risk factors, and 15% of adults have one or more of these conditions and it has not been diagnosed. When we look at the country, we see clusters of where heart disease exists. One of the greatest places is in the southeast part of the country. I always say this is where they invented deep fried turkey. How could it not be the greatest place to have heart disease? Um, for so many different reasons, the way people live, the access to health care, the information, the education, the empowerment, that's what makes a difference. And that's why Go Red began. Physicians, OBGYNs and primary care physicians who are on the forefront of taking care of women incorporate these trials about prevention less than about 30 to 50 percent of the time. So for every male patient who comes in, there's an understanding of how to risk stratify to decide if they're at risk for heart disease. And with women, it's just not used. So what is coronary artery disease? I have to go back to this whole concept of the endothelium. The endothelium is the lining of the artery. I always think of it as the lining of a pocketbook. So you know you have the outside of your pocketbook and then you have the lining. If you cut the lining, all of a sudden your lipstick, keys, wallet, gum, everything's gone and you're like fishing, can't find it, and it's between the lining and the pocketbook, that's the lining of the artery. So when there's a tear inside that lining, Ah. Inside that lining, there's cholesterol, inflammatory cells, all these different kinds of cells go in that lining, and all of a sudden, plaque develops. Well, if the lining is not damaged, there's no tear. And if there's no tear, there's no plaque formation. And if there's no plaque formation, there's no heart disease. Now, here's what's so interesting. This was a really morbid study of traumatic deaths of young people. So on the top row, they're ages 15 to 19, and the bottom row, 34. And they're men and women, and what you can see from the light color to the dark color, plaque begins at age 15. Now this study was published in 2002, before the increase in obesity, before we were starting to see high blood pressure and high cholesterol in children. If we repeated this study now, I guarantee we would see plaque developing in 10 year olds. The reality is it does not show up for decades and decades, but it does not mean it's not happening. So when a 20 year old in college is chain smoking, with her friends, that's what we do in college. And it might be fine that day, but the damage that's done to that lining of the artery at 20 
will show up later in life. And the problem is what we can't see, we don't really acknowledge. I always say, you know, with your breasts, you look down, they're in your face. You have to acknowledge it. With your heart, it's not the same. You can't see it. You don't know what's happening. There are arteries throughout the body, in the brain, in the heart, in the kidneys, the liver. If we prevent heart disease, we prevent disease throughout the body. Dementia, there's something called microinfarct, vascular dementia. This is something that develops because of the arteries. So if we deal with the arteries, we're going to deal with disease throughout the body. I think the heart is the center of our universes. And if we really pay attention to the heart, we got everything covered. With women and heart disease, it's so frustrating because not only do women not know about it, doctors don't know about it, but our arteries are very weird. Instead of there being one area where there's disease, men get it in one location. So here's the artery and it's in the middle. Women get it throughout the artery. Now, why is that important? If you do a stress test, go on a treadmill and run and pictures are taken, it compares normal to abnormal. With men, there's one area of abnormal. So when you compare it to a normal, you see there's a problem. With women, the whole artery is abnormal. So there's no place of normal to compare it to. So stress tests, which are the gold standard, don't often diagnose heart disease. So in my practice, I sit here and all of a sudden, all these women are coming in. I have chest pain, I have chest pain, but I had a normal stress test. My doctor said I'm fine and that I'm crazy or I'm anxious. And that started happening over and over and over. And that's kind of how this book happened. Because all of a sudden I'm seeing women younger and younger, sicker and sicker, and not diagnosed. We also know that stress tests are abnormal when the blockage is 70%. If you have a blockage that's 30, 40, 50, 60%, you're gonna have a normal stress test. But here's what's so scary. Heart attacks happen at blockages less than 50%. So even if you do get it on a treadmill, remember Tim Russert, Meet the Press, who had a very, very normal stress test in April, big hotshot cardiologist in DC, he died in June. His stress test being normal meant that there was no blockage that was greater than 70%, but he must have had a blockage that was 50% or less, because these are the ones that cause rupture and cause sudden death. I'm Jennifer, I'm 40, and I love my Botox. I love not seeing those lines anymore. I'm in and out in about 20 minutes. You can tell there's a glow in their face. I don't feel 60, I don't look 60, I mean, I feel great. I love it here at the Skin Center. Bye-bye, crow's feet. <laughs> <laughs> Find your own beautiful at Pennsylvania's number one Botox provider, the Skin Center, with one of our introductory express offers, starting at just $99. I'm aging beautifully. <laughs> The Federal Health Insurance Marketplace is now open. That means you're free to shop for the health plan that's right for you. UPMC Health Plan has some of the most affordable plans on the marketplace. And they all give you full in-network access to UPMC, plus other doctors and hospitals in your community. Visit upmchealthplan.com or call 1-855-297-UPMC to learn why so many people have chosen UPMC Health Plan. Enroll today. Women have different symptoms than men. There might be unusual fatigue, sleep, disturbances, shortness of breath, um, flu-like symptoms, indigestion, chest pain. And what we know is that two weeks before a heart event, merit, many times women do report these symptoms. And at the heart attack event, shortness of breath is very, very common. Nausea, sweating, maybe not that central chest pressure. I think of the Hollywood heart attack of a man clutching his chest, blue in the face, passing out. That's not what a woman looks like. Rosie O'Donnell had a heart attack last summer and she wrote about it. She wrote a beautiful poem really saying, I was nauseous, my arms hurt. Like who would think it was my heart? And so part of the issue is women need to understand that this totally looks different. This was a survey that 56% of women said they would call if they had chest pain, but only 30% said they would call 911 if they had shortness of breath. Yet, shortness of breath is the most common symptom. What's so scary is that in this trial, a couple thousand patients, the first symptom 
of heart disease in these women, 64% of the time was sudden cardiac death. So when we look at women in heart disease, if we don't deal with prevention, we're gonna miss the boat. And so when I sit and do and travel and talk and go red for women and running all over in the book, it's because women need to know this one is up to them. This is not up to your doctor. And I've explained why. Diagnosis is hard, symptoms are hard, but the prevention, it's really up to you. So what are we gonna do about it? It's really about your life and the modifiable risk factors. So here's the general risk factors that we kind of uh, traditionally talk about, age, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, family history, diabetes, smoking, and stress became a later risk factor. There was a trial, the InterHeart trial, showed that nine modifiable risk factors cause 90% of heart attacks. So what does that mean? 90% of the time, heart disease is based on how you live because cholesterol, blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, abdominal obesity, that is dependent on how you choose to live, on your diet, on your exercise, whether you get up and walk, whether you're smile, laughing, how you view the world. The reality is that we can't predict breast cancer, we can't predict colon cancer, but we can predict heart disease. So it's not so scary even though you can't see it because 90% of the time there's something that we can do about it. We do know that if you have a family history, it puts you at an increased risk, but that doesn't mean you're gonna get it. It is not a sentence, because 90% of the time, it's up to you. The first risk factor, diabetes, is really becoming an epidemic in this country as we get more obese, as we live less healthy lifestyles. Greater than 10% in 2001 of those dark red states had diabetes. And we know since 2002 that diabetes is a coronary artery disease risk equivalent, meaning you have diabetes, you're gonna get heart disease. Yet, 36% know they have it and are not treated. The longer that we have heart disease, uh, diabetes, the longer you carry the disease, the more chance of death. So when we talk about obesity, 70%, of our country is overweight, 30% are obese. You just go to like public places like Walt Disney World and things like that and look around. I was a spokesperson for a while for Kellogg cereal and it took me to Battle Creek, Michigan, which I don't know if you know Battle Creek, Michigan. So I, you know, I live in New York, I live right in the city, bad place for diabetes and obesity, but everyone walks, everyone walks. So it depends where you go in New York. It clusters, but here I go to Battle Creek and there's a lot of land. We don't have land like this. We don't have these huge stores. There was this huge store that was the size of two city blocks wide, two city blocks long, and instead of having carts, they had motorized scooters with baskets to put the food in so people didn't have to walk. Now, the people there were so morbidly obese that I don't think they even could have walked through the grocery store to pick up the potato chips, the soda. I was absolutely out of my mind running through the store saying, take that out, why, why are you buying this? And I thought, this is it, my job's over, <laughs> because it was so disturbing. Now here's the flip side to it. The choices that are in these supermarkets are also potato chips and soda. So I was, I was on the show, The Doctors, many years ago, and I was talking about chest pain, and this woman in the Bronx saw me on the show and tracked me down and came to me as a patient. And she was so motivated. She wanted to lose weight and get healthy. And I said, all right, let's do this. Let's do this together. Three months later, she comes in and she gained about 10 pounds. And I thought,